How's it going, everyone? I'm Bert. And I'm Fonz. And this is... Bert and Fonz. All right. So for the podcast today, there's something a little special that Fonz and I want to talk about. And this is a project that you've been very, very passionately working on uh, for a long time now. And that I've sort of helped along the way with. Um, and it was something that we wanted to share with you because we, we both really like it and we want to talk about it and talk about the process of making it. And it's actually a music video uh, for one of your songs that you have recorded. So you want to kind of tell us a little more about that? four minute film in history. <laughs> the longest production of a four minute film. It's a five years to make. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were hoping for three. So we'll get into that because it was an involved, it's like the first um, film project that I've actually really done. Yeah, yeah. I've worked in some stuff. I've worked in some film projects, but I've never had my own. And like this was it. Um, and yeah, it had to do with a song that I wrote um, back in 2014. Sure, yeah. So a bunch of us, um, as some of you know, I, I I used to play in bands a lot. Uh, a lot of my lifelong friends in Spain continue to do so. So some of them are still professionally doing it. Right, Others right. let it go a while back like I did. Um, I just... I started focusing on my daughter. I moved to the States. I had a lot of changes. and I just didn't want to be in a band because it really does um, require your full um, dedication if you want to get serious yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of dropped that for a while. And then for um, our 30th, 50th, sorry, birthday. <laughs> so in 2014, a bunch of us turned 50. Okay. And some of us, some of us were touring. Some of us were not like myself. Right. Uh, and what we decided to do is uh, have a big concert for all our friends. And we kind of were tired watching on Facebook other friends that had preceded us doing this thing. Right. Where they would try to treat themselves to a pseudo star event and pass themselves as the superstars and just get playing a really expensive um, concert hall. Right, or exactly. Room. And then like the friends, whole typical rock star fame sort of yeah. thing. And then they had their friends pay for expensive tickets and have to pay like for expensive drinks. Oh, and man, shit. that's not how you do it with friends. Right. So what we decided to do is we were going to get every single band we'd been in or at least a good presentation of them. Right. And hire, rent out a place um, that was affordable to us. So it was yeah. a little small, intimate, but not small enough to be too crowded. And just treat our friends to a catering service and get them all drunk, you know, and like just get Which them. sounds awesome. Yeah, it was. It was it was just so fun. <laughs> so what happened is, um, and some of my friends, so like I was headlining, I was in the headlining band, which was the Mosquitoes, which plays rhythm and blues and blues and rock and roll. Sure, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that was like, all of the bands had something to do with the Mosquitoes, right? So these guys told me, why don't you do some of your punk stuff? And I was, well, I don't get along with the, those guys anymore. <laughs> and I don't want to, you know. Right. And they were like, well, you should. And so what happened is I got in touch with some of my friends in Spain in the business. I got in touch with a number of bands, and they kind of sort of auditioned for me. Sure, yeah, and yeah. I just picked one. I selected one, and I hired them. And then we got together. So I sent them songs that they could study. We got together, and then after that, I told them, I have this song that I wrote. Like an idea for this yeah. thing you want to do. And I have this idea to make a, a music clip. How much would you guys charge me to record it with you guys and and help me out with it? And, right. And they were like, we don't charge you anymore because we're your band now. Oh, that's awesome. So that was that's awesome. awesome. That was an awesome moment that we had. And um, and that was really cool in and of itself. These guys have their own band. It's called Nose. It's an amazing band. It's more... Originally it was grunge, but it's kind of more punk rock now. Sure, yeah, yeah. And they just, you know, they just do me out when I go back there and they, they work with me at the project. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So I came up with a song and I was like, what song can I, I had been 25 years without writing anything. Yeah. And I was like, what's a good song to make about an aging rocker? Or rocker <laughs> you know? And I had seen all these guys again, my age or around my age, like do this whole stupid um, not all of them, you know, but some of them were doing this this kind of cheesy um, stereotype of the hot chick and stuff. Like, when you're 50 years old, that doesn't look hot, you know. Right. That kind of looks creepy. <laughs> so I was kind of, you know, I, I was kind of turned off by all that. And I was like, I want to make something really kind of cool. And I thought, like, well, death, death is kind of cool for somebody that's aging. In the music genre, it's supposed to be. I mean, it can be, yeah. It yeah. was a young music genre. Now you don't fit in because you're like, you know, hey. You know, it's like the undertones that keep talking about, like, one of their biggest hits is Teenage Kicks. Mm-hmm. The lead singer of Fear Girl Shark, he's, I don't want to be singing Teenage Kicks at age 50. 
Yeah. And there's two approaches. There's a, the, the, the singer they have now is like, I don't care. It's a, it's a fun, <laughs> it's a song, it's a fun song. You know. Yeah. So you got both. Um, I'm kind of more on, on the sharky side. I'm like, I don't want to be talking about shit that doesn't pertain. Right. So Paying the Boatman was a song. And it's a song about, uh, it makes winks to death and the, the relativity of life value. Right, and, right, right. And it has quotes from everything from Blade Runner, from whom the bells toll. I just, I just yeah, had a lot yeah, of fun yeah. just doing all these winks to all this, these myths. And then I came up with this idea that I actually ran by Robert like back in the day, the f- five years ago in a coffee right. shop. And Robert really liked it. And I was like, will you help me with this? You know, and I, I, I jumped at it. I thought it was an awesome idea. And, and yeah, we, and we actually, we, we, we did play around with a couple of ideas also at the storyline when I was still writing it. Um, so that was fun too. And then, well, one thing I want to say just real quick yeah. is that when you went back to Spain and you had this big gathering, you actually had it record or like videotaped. And so there's actually like footage of you performing these tracks right. uh, during this. And, and, you know, I just want to bring that to light because, I mean, if you haven't, um, if you don't know about them or you want to see them, there's going to be links down below. But right. I think it's cool to also check out that, too, because that live performance, like the sound quality with those videos was also just great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, those, those yeah, that was live live sound. Yeah. But we didn't use the live sound for the, for the music clip. We did have Right, right not clips. for the music video. Yeah. yeah. We have links there. We have other clips where it's actually live sound and it's us playing live. Yeah. And that's how we sounded in that, like, you know, nothing has been dubbed. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'll put some there too that you can tell that it's live because I screw up the lyrics. <laughs> I don't remember them sometimes. <laughs> Just laughing because you know, um, there's one where actually we're playing a song from the Husker Du. Oh, yeah, and a friend of mine is singing with me, he's like an old college friend, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's really fun on stage, but he's not much of a singer, he'll tell you himself. You know? <laughs> but um, we used to be friends back in the day when I was doing this stuff, and he just loves the song, the, song, the girl who lives on Heaven Hill, yeah, yeah. She's a girl who lives on heaven hill. And he doesn't have much English, so he learned the lyrics. He made all this effort to know it. And on the first verse, sure enough, like, I screw up, like, the second line. <laughs> and you can tell that he's looking at me like, you know, you moron. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm shrugging it off, you know. So, so yeah, so I came with this song called Paying the Boatman or Paying the Ferryman. Um, and it's based on the boatman um, Greek this Proto-European myth, myth of right. There's actually like a, a lore, legend, sort of inspiration yeah. behind it. Yeah, and there's a ton of different cultures. I said Greek, ancient Greek, but there's a lot of different cultures that pulls from this. Where the belief is that uh, there's a boatman that takes you to the other world, right, when you die, like you know? crossing the River Styx. Sort so of one thing. of them is the River Styx. The, the other one Greek, is another yeah. lake. I don't know what the name of the lake is too, but it depends on which culture right. you're talking to. It, it all has like myth in that, and I also was. Um, drew a lot of inspiration of this painting called The Isle of the Dead, oh, which yeah. has inspired a lot of artists since the 18th century. So it's a painting. there's almost like a semi cult like following. Yeah, of it's that, not right? even semi; it's a full blown cult. It's a full blown like, cult. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, Salvador Dali has has. Had Done like an interpretation. Versions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a website out there and it's really old. It's like from the beginning of the internet. So the, the oh, images man. have really low resolution. <laughs> but it's a great uh, it's a great website because it shows every single different it shows the five versions of the actual painting, which has five versions, right. one of which is lost. Um, and so that's the black and white one that you can see on the website because it was lost during World War II. There's one in the United States and the Met in New York. Mm-hmm. And the year that I went to New York to direct a photo shoot like back in 97. Yeah. They had taken it down. Oh, so you didn't get to see it there? Yeah. The, there's this Brooklyn Museum guard. I can't imitate the Brooklyn <laughs> accent, but the guy was so funny. He's like, what do you want from me? You know, it's like the curator decided not to put it up. So that's, <laughs> do you know how many paintings there's down in the cellar? You know, and I was like, yeah, but that one, come on. <laughs> you know, why'd you pull that one down? So I didn't get to see the Isle of the Dead in person. Uh, but what I do know is I discovered it through Rashmaninoff. Really? The okay, classic, yeah. Yeah, he has a piece, an amazing piece called The Isle of the Dead. And we have to have a wink in the beginning of the of the music clip. There's 
these keyboards played by Alex Vogel, who's uh, the son of our friend Andrew Vogel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's was very young. What, what's his? I think he's thirteen. Maybe he is. He's thirteen, and he just did it. You know, in his oh, I'm sure day. Andrea will let you know. And, and I was, I, well, no, I was there with him. I recorded him. He was yeah, nice yeah, enough yeah. to to lend his keyboard skills. And, and so at the very beginning, and the haunting little sound that we have to the pre part of the... That's day. awesome. Yeah, so that that's the island. That's, that's super awesome. Yeah, so then we came up with this story. And then we had to come up... We The whole thing about the story is that I am older and I get younger and younger and younger. Exactly. So it worked because we shot the beginning scenes five years after we shot the first scenes. Yeah. So I am actually older. And then we <laughs> use my nephews as stand-ins to... For your younger self. Right. And so two of my nephews were lived here in the state. So the whole logistics was... And then we, we made this joke of this... There's this tunnel in the Twin Cities where we run through and we come out in Spain. Right. So, the, so in the actual music video, it looks like you run through uh, while you're in Minneapolis. When you come out, right, right. you're in Madrid. Right, right. And uh, granted, it was my first project. It was super ambitious for a first project. So there's a ton of things that don't come across immediately when you watch it for the first time. And I realized that after a while, I realized in four minutes, there's no way I can tell the story. <laughs> well, not... Not like that, because the, I think in your mind, the way that you would have liked to tell it is like a feature length sort of thing. But then it's in the context of this song. Like the, when we were talking about this originally yeah. and you're like, OK, I want this shot and I want this shot. And I'm like, all right. But you realize in order to get that right, like it, a couple seconds isn't going to do it. Like it needs to be stretched out yeah. so, a little bit. No, and, but remember that we talked about it and I was like, here's what I'm, I'm, I realize it's never going. No one's ever going to get this story the first time they watch it. Right. So only somebody crazy enough to want to watch it more than once <laughs> is ever going to get close to okay, Oh, wow. Okay. So that's him and he's getting younger. Otherwise, very few people notice it. So what I did is I, I, I told myself, I'll settle for make it visually interesting. Right. So make it intriguing and make it look interesting and weird and, and edit it really well or as well as I can to make it look interesting. And then, you know. And then whoever wants to watch it more than once, they, they'll figure it out. Otherwise, at yeah. least they watch something interesting with music. You know? Well, and I know that one thing that you and I talked about, too, is that if they don't get the actual meaning of it, it's it's visually interesting enough that if you watch it through, like, you're going to walk away with some sort of impression of it, mm -hmm. whether it's the correct one or one that you sort of inferred yourself by watching it. But I, I, what I like most about, like, the end result here is the fact that, like – You've been showing it to people, a couple people now, now that we're all wrapped up with it. A couple, more than a couple people. Right. There's and a bunch of people. That's like, you've heard like a bunch of different theories already on right, sort right. of what their interpretation of it was. And yeah. I always, I think that's really interesting. That that's really great because, yeah, because that's a great point. Because when, when I was younger, I remember hearing this whole um, cliche of um, the story is finished by the audience. It's complete. And I thought that was such a pedantic <laughs> cliche. And then one day I realized what people were saying. Which like it actually sunk in. Yeah, it's like your story is not complete until somebody's watched it, and then they give it an interpretation which is out of your hands. Yeah. And that in and of itself is pretty cool. So yesterday, actually, I was talking to – having beers with a, with a friend from work. Yeah. You know, hi, Trent. And, uh, <laughs> and he gave me an interpretation I never thought of. You know, he said like the girl at the end – that comes out of the boat. So, so the whole story is that there's a, a girl in the boat from the Isle of the Dead. Right. Is actually my daughter being held hostage. That was my interpretation. Right. By, by the boatman. And I have to kind of give her life and I live through her at the end. Exactly. So I die and, and live through her. That's kind of the whole symbol, symbolic thing. And what, what what this guy thought, like what Trent thought, was um, I thought that this girl was the puppeteer and she had been yeah just like pulling strings pulling the, the strings whole time. of you know and she was the one that was making you go through all these ordeals and stuff. So I thought that was pretty that was pretty neat. And I, I think like, that, it's a really cool like way to spin it. Right, and I was like, I wish I wouldn't have broken it down so much on the synopsis on the press kit that I submitted to the <laughs> film festivals, you know, because this is actually a cool interpretation I never thought of, and I exactly. should have left it a lot wide open. So that's another little rookie mistake that yeah. I think I made there. I made a bunch, you know. <laughs> it was a ton of fun to do. But. Yeah, Oh, <laughs> 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 
you actually bring up something I want to get to um, in a little bit yeah. with the whole like press kit and the film festivals and submitting it to that. But what I'd like to hear a little bit more about first is <clears> – <throat> After you and I um, started to like talk about this and talk about the shots and we were you know, like, I remember you coming up to me with like rough sketches and you're like, what about this? And then it goes to this and then it switches this yeah, thing yeah. on. I'm like, oh, maybe we should try it a little like this. But like, oh, yes. So that. You, do, do you remember one of them? <laughs> so, so one of them was, uh, one of them was me saying, like, so there has to be a threat. There has to be a threat to the girl that's in the boat while, exactly. I'm, while I'm running. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what to show. Um, I don't know what to – it has to be mean and creepy. And I remember Robert said, like, well, it doesn't have to be anything specific. We can just insinuate it. Maybe he just touches her. He points at her chest and she's gonna he's going to touch her in the heart and, and that really scares you. Right. And it's we, just before, just, like, it makes right. contact. Right. And, and, yeah, and so play again with that. So I remember I did the storyboard. The beginning storyboards are – um, the boatman's approaching um, my daughter with a finger, and in the meantime, I'm running in another part of the world, just running really scared. And the time in the in the time, it, it, yeah, it's a, like an hourglass. Yeah, yeah. The time in the hourglass. The hand keeps running, and I'm running against it. And and then in the real in the last minute, like two years after that, like when we had already shot Madrid. <laughs> yep. Two years after that, I see these Russian crazy guys in YouTube doing a tutorial on how to do flames from your hand. Oh, yeah, like it, uh, this substance that you can, like, yeah. scoop up and then you just light it. Right, because I had seen the effect in After Effects and some tutorials in After Effects. And I thought that would look kind of cool, but it kind of looked like really – Well, it looks like effects. Effecty, yeah. yeah. And I, I thought that would be cool if it, if it went with a flame in their hand, but it kind of looks lame. And then I saw these two guys like, don't try this at home, people, and they just actually <laughs> – Do not try it at home. Look at him, got scared. I don't, it blew up in my face. <laughs> Whatever, you got scared. Ah, this hurts. <laughs> and that flame looks so much more realistic. You could actually move it. I did some tests. Yeah, know, yeah. And you could move it around, and it looks so. And so that ended up being. Well, it looks that. realistic because it's a real flame in your hand, right? And it moves with <laughs> exactly, and it moves with the gusts of air. And yeah, the, exactly. And it's just so good. And I mean, there's that scene where Will like just. You know, just shakes it off his hand. Right, and right. It looks really realistic. It's a beautiful flame just being shook off his... Right, and Will being the actor that you actually brought on um, and actually Will has a of, lot of chops of his own. Yeah, Will is one of the three actors that plays the boat. Well, Will is a, is a filmmaker. Right. And so when I interviewed Will, he was like, um, I've never acted, but I look forward to, to trying this for the first time. And I actually did... A bunch of interviews. I put uh, an ad, and I got a bunch of actors to submit their resume and stuff. Yeah, there were some yeah, actually, had, like fighting skills, like gladiator fight training. And, wow, really? Yeah. yeah. And I remember that Will made the cut because Will was studying for director. I was thinking like he's not an actor, but this isn't. But he has the vision. Well, he has the eye. Well, yeah. So the thing was, it's a music clip. The acting is not that big. But right. it's more important to understand the composition. So if I told Will, stand with your shoulder up here when we were doing test, because here's how it cuts and I would draw it on the frame, Will immediately understood that, you know, that's all you were seeing in the frame. So exactly. Was, so it was, you know, he was uh, – but also, I don't know if you remember this, but we on purpose wrote a story where people were masked and hooded so that if – if I was in Madrid shooting with a different actor, it could work. Exactly. So the the person in the bike is one actor, obviously one actor in Spain, a different one here in uh, yeah in Minneapolis. And so all of that stuff was a really interesting exercise of what's called resource filming, meaning you film with the resource you have. It exactly, in. and you just kind of make it work. Right. And a couple of them were total rookie mistake because I I just thought like, hey, I'm in Minnesota, so I, one resource can be a boat. And then you can get a rowboat in so to save your life. They're, you know, they're all the big ass boats with like a big motor. Like you can't exactly. Get, the only boats that I could find in the Twin Cities that had oars were Worst these boat. boats that they use in in Lake. What's what's it called now? Bide, Bide, yeah, Mas, Bide Makaska. Makaska, yeah. yeah. And uh, and those are from the city of Minneapolis, and they charge a boatload for you. you exactly, know, and it's like for you know per hour even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we ended up buying a canoe, <laughs> and then we sold it secondhand later when we were done shooting. After we had spray painted the whole thing. Too. So well, we sold it <laughs> spray painted. Yeah. But the thing is too that we it was just like a rental as opposed to buying. You know. Well, in that fa in that sense, yeah, it was just like a. A long-term rental. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then I, you know, you remember, so, so my daughter is in the shoot, but she also could not be, she lives in Los Angeles, so she couldn't be here for all the shoots. So we had a, a stand-in. Yeah. Who was a wonderful actress and filmmaker. Um, 
Layla yeah. Prinsad Johnson. Yes. Um, thanks, Layla. Uh, and she does her own her own really cool films too. Um, and uh, she's a documentary um, filmmaker. I was going to say writer, but I, th- I guess it's the same thing. So, uh, and then we had my my nephews who had to be flown in. Yeah, it's, I mean the amount of effort it took to put this whole thing together. Like, if you actually think about it over time, like, all the different parts and pieces had to be done. So there was a shoot in Madrid that needed to happen. There was a shoot in Minneapolis. The shoot in Minneapolis required people from Spain so much and from Los Angeles production. to be yeah. in Minneapolis to do the shoot. Yeah. And then trying to skip coordinate schedules and making sure that the crew was available to help you film on those yeah. days. And Actually, Robert like, was the guy that took care of that in the Twin Cities. So he's a producer in the States. And also... Um, on my other channel, just the regular Burnimus channel, I did a couple of vlogs where I actually documented some oh, of that right. uh, behind the scenes um, process of the whole thing yeah. to kind of like bring it all together and just show kind of what goes into making some of that. So if you're interested, uh, we'll have links down below, but you can go check those out too as part of a, like a behind the scenes or a making of sort well, of collaboration thing. And that's where you actually interview Percy. I, I do. Is the, oh, the Percy. Mascot, <laughs> the mascot of the shoot. Don't, don't treat Percy like that. Percy was a star of this whole no, thing. I was a star. Yes, yes. He yes. was a key actor. Granted, he's just a skeleton replica made of plastic, but yeah. he is. He was hard to find. <laughs> so there's a couple of things that were really hard to find, like uh, the hourglass. I don't know if you remember this, but until the last minute, we didn't have an hourglass because I do remember that. Yeah, I wanted to buy one. I couldn't find one. Some say my you could only find the tiny ones that they use for kitchen. Yeah, but not one like you know yeah. massive like and you were was looking a, for. A larger one, but it was kind of Halloweeny, and it just looks like a Halloween toy. So right. I remember Lee Tai got me that one, and it was like it had like these skeleton hands around it, and it just looked like a joke. And I was like, no, this has to be really scary. Right. It has to be something out of a coffin from something that's four thousand years old. Right. You know. And so I ended up getting these bird feeders. <laughs> so I, I was at Menards buying props or something else, and I saw these bird feeders that were these bulbs, you know, and I just yeah. bought two of those. And like a lot, like and, wasn't it like a little PVC pipe or something that yeah, you threaded PVC, to yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> put these together. So there was a lot of yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff like that we had to do. Well, that was one of the best parts I think about doing this. So I don't know how it was um, in Madrid because I know. Uh, you can feel free to explain a little bit more yeah, about yeah. this. But when you were in Madrid shooting, you said that because you have a lot of friends who are in the industry there, uh, they actually have a lot of like this equipment and the cameras and yeah. the rigs and all kinds of stuff to do the shoots. And then we got here and we're like, okay, well, we don't and we don't have any of that. We have DSLR cameras. So our friend James, who's the cameraman, the main cameraman in Minneapolis, mm-hmm. he had DSLR equipment and he was he was also learning to do – film and he was very interested in that but it was a dslr camera right and he had all these um lenses and stuff and he knew how to do it so that was cool that we had him but some weekends he wasn't available and he was nice enough to say you guys are welcome to my to equipment. use the equipment yeah but then it, I, I was scrambling like three days before the weekend trying to learn from tutorials <laughs> i've gone to film school but i have an aversion for photography so i know how to edit you know i was i was the one who edited it you know yeah yeah i know some things well, I taught myself to edit for this thing, but I know the principles, and I did some. I've done some animation in the past, so I kind of know things like that. But for the production, I just know from class. I've never done it myself, or from watching other people do it. Absolutely, yeah. Myself. And so there were people in Spain who actually knew cameras, and they they control the cameras. And that guy, and you had to, you were able to like kind of lean on them and rely on them essentially right. for that part of it. Plus, Spain did not have the operatic logistics that Minneapolis had. There were no costumes involved in Spain. It was just a straight. Right. Music clip. Yep. Uh, and, you know, the only It was a little was, more straightforward. Right, right, right. There wasn't any costume. Which, you know, it was like just me in those black shorts and a black t shirt. Right. And then Pepe playing the biker with uh, the hoodie. And that's it. Everybody else dresses however they want. Yep. And the, the cool thing is we, we got Tabacalera, which is an awesome location. Thanks to Pepe. Really? Like that's, that's not a place where people have all that access, much access to. to. Okay. And it's just a beautiful place. I don't know if you remember. It's like a. It's a 19th century building. No, yeah. It's, no, no. It's even older. It's from the discovery, from after the discovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big. And so, like all these these um, hallways, like they're from that era, and they've it, it was given to a collective in Spain that then repurposed it for like you know um, activist groups to, to to kind of do their thing. So that's why it's full of graffiti. Like they just re 
the, a lot of artists just redecorated and repainted, and that's why it has such a, that interesting feel. So yeah, remember yeah. that corner where we're running? It's full of graffiti and, and painting. Well, I also areas. remember how much you had to kind of crop out of that shot, too. Yeah. <laughs> At a later point. But Well, there was one, yeah, well, there's one where there's like this, um, there was a couple of graffitis that I had to do an effect over it. Right, but, just to uh, block them out. But. but it's a really interesting, like where the where the kids are playing, like where the band is playing. Yeah, yeah, that area. Like, not very many people have access to that. And, that's and you're actually, talking about like the opening intro shots to the thing. Yeah, those are dungeons, like where they're playing, where the actual band is. Yeah, playing. those yeah. are like old dungeons from this. Oh, that's this, so cool! Right, so which just was, really adds to like the the mystique and the mystery yeah. of it. And then it's really well lit because Pablo Santana is actually. Uh, a very well-known award-winning photographer okay. in Madrid. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a he's a, a partner of mine. I mean, he we play in the Mesquinas together. Well, acuerdo. Yeah, um, in that those scenes, and then here we had to figure it out, and I had to compensate with my knowledge of digital imagery. Yep, to do color coding, and then yeah, a bunch of color correcting for all of it. A ton of color correction to make it all match because things didn't match, and I just used. I think I used different shutter speeds. Like it, I did a bunch of no-nos, and then we had to fix all of them. <laughs> so like the compositions were kind of cool, but then it was like, oh, this is all very different, and I had yeah. to color correct and and correct that and through effects. So that was a that was a lot of a learning curve there, and uh, and then special effects I'd never done. Yeah, so I had to teach myself. Yeah, that was a learning part. Like I remember um, you talking through like through what you wanted to do, and like yeah, we had the practical effects, which you know we could once you learned how to do it with the one video, we could just like replicate it and do it on the spot like a couple times in a in a shoot. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing that a lot. But when it came to like the the visual effects, as far as like the digital ones. Like that was you learning for the first time how to do yeah. a lot of that stuff. Well, the last year was was a lot of the, the flame scenes with Will. The flames, and then which uh, is like I think five seconds of one and three seconds of another. Like, yeah. that, that was a full year, you know. We just had, <laughs> and then me, like I told you the other day, I, I, I'd be going through a, a process, a super painful process that it took taken me forever to learn. And halfway through, I realized it was a, a faster process to do the same thing. Isn't that always how But it, it was too is, late though. to go back now. So I just have to just see this thing through. It was horrible. We're stuck painful. now. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had to swim to the other end now, you know. Right. So that was kind of, that was painful. So one thing I really, really appreciate about um, all of this, and this is sort of for selfish reasons, but I think you might agree, is that when we started talking about the boatman and doing all of this and working on the production and all, uh, you know all, all of the different aspects of it because mm. um, i mean honestly it was from conception all the way through final that you know yeah. you've been working on this and i've kind of been helping out here and there when i am able to mm -hmm. um but what i like about it is that it was actually kind of one of the launching points for even doing this podcast oh yeah you're right yeah yeah, yeah. um and that, I just thought that was really cool because we got to a point where we're working on the Boatman. We're like, we're having a lot of fun doing this, but eventually Boatman's going to stop. Right. What, what is something other creative project or something else that we could do? Right. Um, and so I had the idea. I was like, well, you know, we have these great conversations together. And I think that we have enough differences and similarities at the same time mm -hmm. that – Maybe we should just do a podcast, man. You know, I was like, a podcast? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I was kind of, I was like, the hell do you mean you don't know what a podcast like, yeah, is? After the claims I made, like, remember the Information Age episode, I'm like, hey, I'm not new to this, you know. I'm right. Like, an early adopter. And then I'm like, what's a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> and it totally dated me. Right. And then, but it was a fun process to sort of, like, explain what yeah. it was and, like, Getting to see the realization on your faces, I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah. this is the format, and it's meant to be, like, more long form, and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people don't cut it. Some people do. It just depends on the type of content you want to make. Right. And Well, it was a lot of fun, and also remember that um, when we started actually doing the podcast, it was the last year of The Boatman. That's true. And I was just so exhausted with the boatman that I would use the sessions that we had to record. Yeah, that was your fun time. As a break. I was yeah. like, hey, yeah, I got podcasts this weekend. <laughs> I can take a break from yeah. learning these damn animations. Yeah, I don't have to put like masks around with to put more flames <laughs> and track them too because tracking is crazy. That's true. But, yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, so that's how this this podcast started. In fact, yeah, yeah. It, I'm uh, I personally am very thankful for that. Yeah, just look, because I have too. a lot of fun doing this. Me too. So. Likewise, likewise, I have a blast with this. Um, you know, granted, we're getting the hang of it, but it's such a good oh, yeah. journey. It's, oh yeah. You know, uh, and, I'm sure anyone who's been listening to us for any amount of time uh, can tell. Like, okay, they're not necessarily uh, you know yeah. old hat at this yet. And they're pretty new. If but you made it this far, hey, that's <laughs> off to you. Oh, we're going to reuse jokes, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it works. But it does work. It is very applicable. Because, uh, yeah, we're still trying to figure this thing out. So it's kind of yeah. like the process of the boatman where – a lot of it we just had to figure out as we go. We're doing the same thing for the podcast. Like, right. neither of us have done this before. And I was the one who had, like, been listening to podcasts and watching them on YouTube. And I was like, all right, I've got this idea. It's a little mm-hmm. crazy, but I want to do it. Are well, you in? It, right. And, and this, as two designers, because that's kind of our, our theme here, like, as two designers who like to draw um, inspiration from all kinds of things. Exactly. You know, uh, our, our thing is you have to do something creative in order not to go nuts or being creative is healthy for you, however you want to put it. Um, so this this is a case in point where, where both the podcast and the whole Boatman music video where, where we actually used our creative juices to kind of come together Absolutely. And, and get energy out of it and, and learn and, and have fun through the learning process, you know, so and hopefully like, you know, some of this we can pass on to you or you can get something yeah, out of it. Uh, or maybe even like hearing us talk about this maybe even inspires you to go out and do your own stuff. Like, absolutely. I, I think that would be awesome. Absolutely, but. yeah. And uh, yeah, and you know what? Um, let me give somebody a shout out here. So like, yeah, go for it. D for Darius. We're going to put a link to his channel. Oh, uh, he's done. Yeah. Like that dude – you know, I mean, there's a bunch of different things I've got on YouTube to help me out with this, but Darius Britt, like, you rock. And um, I don't know if you're watching this or if you ever will, but we're going to put a link <laughs> to his channel. Yeah, because that shouts guy, out to D for Darius yeah. for sure. Yeah, and I mean, that guy did his first feature length film. I remember watching the documentary of his, his first feature length called Unsound, which is really good. Yeah. And he was like, this took me forever. It was seven years. And I'm like, it took me five years to do four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> of, you know, let alone 90 minutes of a full feature, you know. Right. And I don't have dialogues. I just put a song, you know, that of course I had to write because otherwise I'd have copyright issues. Right, exactly. So I was like, I'll just write it myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, yeah. So what else? Uh, I actually think it works a lot better because it is your song because that's what really drove the passion behind all of that time making the music video is that it was your music, yeah. the, the thing that you wanted to say in it, and it wanted to, you wanted it to be done a certain way. I think for any of you that go out there and watch it, you can definitely tell like the amount of passion and energy that went into it, especially when you consider the fact that you came up with the song, wrote the song, performed it in Spain, and said, you know what, I want to do more with this, came up with an idea to do the music video, um, spent about two years like really fine tuning the story mm-hmm. that you wanted to tell and the scenes that needed to be done, the five year process of making the whole thing, learning new techniques and tricks mm-hmm. and tapping into your roots. And it's like this whole, it, it's basically one big love journey yeah. of making this thing from well, start to finish. Yeah. And I also made a, a bunch of mistakes because one of the things I wanted to do is like, Let's play with my strength. So I go to Spain a lot and I live in the yeah. States. So if I make a story that goes from Spain to the States, yeah. and I have these guys cross this tunnel and they show – but then at the end, you know, logistics – and this is where you really learn. Logistics don't let you tell the story the way you would to make it that clear. So a lot of people don't realize that you're in a tunnel and then you come out. And, you know, there's a bunch of things that you don't get the first time. Right. And that that's that's something I learned from, you know. So things like uh, it's not going to be that it's not going to be that easy to shoot in a in a place in Madrid where you can tell, oh wow, Madrid right away. Yeah. You know, so then we have to have us running over this manhole that says Madrid. You know? <laughs> we what can we these, do to help yeah. tell the story? Or like I flew my nephews in um, to, to to the Twin Cities to shoot them in the Twin Cities yep. as me. Yeah. And granted, that was a great weekend of bonding together, all of us in the family. Yeah, that was pretty great. Actually. But I didn't get a single shot of their faces in the Twin Cities. So <laughs> I could have shot that in Baltimore where they live. And so there's a bunch of stuff that I learned there of like, oh, OK. So you, you, you learn how you can like cheat shots to like infer something. Yeah. Uh, and then location scouting. 
Like that was in film school. Like always heard about it, done it a couple of times. Whenever when I worked um, back in the day when I worked in the media, I was briefly a camera guy. Yeah, uh, not photography. So because we already talking about it. it was video, so you don't need to know that much. That's why I don't know about the shutter angle and that stuff. Uh, but there would always be somebody taking care of those logistics, so you took them for granted. When you have to do your own location scouting, you realize how fucking hard that is. Yes, it is. And I was like, wow. So it took me to find that tunnel. Yeah, the, the one here. With the drone yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then, of course, like, you know, you have to pull a, a bunch of favorites from friends. Like, well, I thought favorite. that was one of the, actually, the great things about this whole project was how many of your your friends that you've had for years or even new friends that you got to, like, help out with this. And so now they're all a part of this. Right. Uh, as well, right? But there's also like a bunch of people that you burn. You're like, you know, like if I ever do it, well, that's true. Film, if, you, if you have a bunch of favors and you're just like, all right, we're going through all of them right now. <laughs> and this anybody who does uh, who does filmmaking or amateur filmmaking knows that. Like when you start out, you just end up burning a bunch of friends because you ask them for their house to shoot there or for you know. And yeah, so yeah. Eventually, you're like, oh, I'm not going to be able to call any more favors from this dude because <laughs> you know he'll kill me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, so and. Um, and in your case, like, you know, you and I kind of barter back and forth with... We, we do. We do. So, like, we have a big trading system, essentially, of every time I need help with something, I know I can call on you because there's plenty of times that you've called on me and I've gotten to help or, by, you know... Right, right. There's, we built up credit, essentially, between the two of right. us. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But there's, like, people... And, you know, and some people in Spain, same deal, you know. But then there's friends that we have here that we, I'm so grateful for. Like, so Scotty and Thalo... Yeah. For letting us shoot in the in the shore. You know, Scotty for facilitating that and Stalo yep. for being actually one of the... Which wound up being such a, a big place to like shoot a lot access. of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, even the importance that that location served within the video itself. Right. Like that, we had a lot of very key shots that needed to get done on a location like that. Yeah. And the fact that we were able to use that location because of them was just phenomenal. Right, right, right. And, and also like learning the hard way too, though. In fact, like um, getting a permit in Minneapolis is super prohibitive, expensive, and Madrid, right. not so much. But then the Mississippi is international waters. No, actually, the Mississippi is accessible to any citizen of the United States. Yeah. Um, now I remember now what the law is, but there is a law that started with one president like a long time ago. Yeah. The Mississippi is open, so we could end the Mississippi shooting. The Mississippi is just awesome, you know. It was fun, yeah. Or like one of the first shots, the first shot of the, the Twin Cities is the last shot ever taken in the production. Yeah, and it was me just driving past this bridge that had been closed for years because they were um, working on it, the Lowry Bridge. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just coming back from lunch to work, and all of a sudden I see this, and I'm like, and it's the last day before the big snowstorms come in yep according to the, <laughs> so i just pull over and send an email to work saying guys i'm really two hours late because i just found the spot to do that shot i had like these really poor shots that i took in uh in cedar lake i think with a couple of buildings popping up yep. on top of yep. the trees yep. and that was that shot and then i saw this beautiful shot of the twin cities and the mississippi converging and it was the last day where, you, where we were going to be, you know. Before everything was just going to be covered in white. So I went home, got the camera, went right back there, you know, got on the Lowry Bridge and started shooting. And that's like the last shot of the entire production. That's the last shot of the ferryman. Yeah. But, you know, how like these things just come about and just how you learn how difficult it is for some of those things. Right. And location scouting oh. is so hard, you know. So speaking of location scouting uh, and difficulties, so one anecdote I wanted to bring up was the location that we were just talking about in Minneapolis and the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. um, one of the challenges that we had for that one that I thought was really interesting was that because of where that location is in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. like all along the Mississippi there, there was a lot of times we had to sort of pause production because there were like kayaking tours that were coming by. And the moment that anybody sees like – people on a beach with cameras like acting and, and doing stuff, and stuff. Yeah, then yeah. suddenly everyone like slows the kayak down. They're just drifting and watching or they'd like start pulling in closer yeah. to kind of see what's going and, on. And, they're and now they're in the shot. shot. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> yeah. oh, and let me say before we continue though, cause I don't think, I think we should clarify this. Um, so making a music video isn't that hard. So we could have just shot the, the way a lot of my friends do music videos is, well, it's just typically the band. Yeah, with the exception of Chano. Chano comes up with some really interesting stories. I'll put right. some links. He has one that he shot it by himself. 
with a camera, but he has himself running through an island, and he would just put the iPhone on the floor. That was oh, like yeah, his, yeah. his feet running, and then he has another where he's holding himself, and he's just really good at doing that. But normally, if you just have the band and you shoot the band, like, only with the band shots in Madrid, I could have edited you could have made a whole video with just that in a weekend. Yeah. In fact, I did that. I actually laid the boatman on top of that. So there's 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 a musical oh, really? only with Ramon and Tano playing <laughs> and me and that screen singing. Yeah. And there's the whole thing without any story. But the thing is, there was a story attached to this, so that's right. where it got. That's where it needed to have like the extra part of it, and it got complex because of that. But that was the interesting. But I just thought it was so interesting on the minute on the Mississippi, like yeah. having to just like stop. And then sometimes we'd have people. I think there was uh, there's another story from when we went to go shoot in Bayfield, yeah, uh, which was a, a tale all on its own. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. not even just yeah. like first of all finding the location. Yeah. Second of all trying to get the canoe up there because we didn't want to rent a canoe up there since you had just purchased it like right. we had talked and about. And painted it and everything. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. And so I remember the day that I came over to help you like try and strap that thing so to this did, rental yeah. truck that so you had we went to YouTube. To. Yeah, so I got a, I rented a truck. <laughs> so here's the thing. We had a, a friend that said he had a location up there but he was young and um, it turned out that we didn't have access. Like, you know, he thought we had access to a bunch of things that we didn't, we didn't have access right, to. Right, right. Plus, it was raining all weekend, so we only got half an hour at the end to shoot with oh, sun. That was such an incredible... And we, he finally found us a good corner of Lake Superior where we had a good shot. But originally, right. we thought we were going to... We were going to shoot in these beautiful caves that are in that area, but then yep. it turned out that it was like not that close by, and we couldn't didn't have access to it as much. But anyway, so I rented this truck... And looked up on YouTube, one of the many ways to tie, tie a, a canoe, canoe to a to pickup. Truck. Yeah, and we chose the one that turns the canoe into a sail, pretty much. <laughs> well, we didn't know that at the time, right? But it basically, like, if this is your pickup truck, this is how we were yeah. putting so the canoe a, on it. A so photo it's like on screen. overhanging. Yeah, so there's one on screen. So it's overhanging, and it kept sliding to one side. So we were driving. Into, I was in the truck, and um, and Robert and Lila were in the, in the car behind. Yep. And as the canoe started moving to one side, when it was starting to tip over, before it would topple, Bert would give me a call on the cell phone and say, you got to pull over. we got to push that canoe back to the center. <laughs> it would be about uh, – so it took about – ordinarily, if you're driving from where we are to Bayfield, it's like a four-hour drive. Yeah. It took us about six hours or so I because so, we had to yeah. stop about every 20 minutes to be like, okay, man, either slow it down or we got to pull over and readjust. Right. In the meantime, <laughs> the people that are waiting for us at Bayfield are waiting to see if we're going to be in time for dinner. Right. Exactly. They're getting, they're getting hungry. And when are you guys showing up? I'm like, dude, don't you know, wait for us. The, yeah, the, the canoe was going to, we're going to have an accident here anyway. So, <laughs> so that was pretty crazy. And yeah. then when we were shooting, the story you were going to tell, remember, that t- about onlookers? Do you want to oh that? yeah, yeah. So that was the story I was getting to. Yeah, is that while we were shooting there, uh, because of the location, we actually managed to get the shot. The people that were um, in the building next door to where this location was actually came out and asked if we were like filming some like demonic. They thought we were, we were devil satanic. Thing or, yeah. We were satanic sect. And we were doing some kind of <laughs> ritual or something. Because all they could see was the the boat that we had set up, and for this shot in the canoe. We had like our fake coffin up on the front, right? And then we have the boatman in the back, who's like in this cloak and like this creepy mask and sort of thing. Because we're using the DSLR camera on a little tripod, it doesn't look like we're filming anything. It doesn't look like a, sh- a shot. You know, there's not big lights, exactly, and big like things, structures or anything. It's just like because we wanted to use the natural the, light of the area. Camera. And, yeah. and they couldn't see us in the camera because we were behind some brush. Yeah, so all they see is this creepy guy in a boat with a coffin on the front and some girl in a white cloak just standing up in the middle of it, like right. being and pushed around. But remember what place. happened? So what happened is the kids, so this was like a, a cabin, a summer cabin or something. So the kids who were playing on the shore started calling out to them. Oh, that's true too. And so one of us, I remember who started saying, kids, stay away from that, please. Yeah. And so then the parents came out really scared going like, <laughs> So there's what this thing going this? on, and these guys are like, keep the kids away from this. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't see me with the camera. I 
was behind a tree or something. Oh, so they were like, what are oh, you yeah. guys up to? So and I remember, like, I think it was you or Clyde that came over and says, like, they think we're, we're doing some I think it was Clyde who went and talked to him. satanic ritual. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, man. <laughs> so I mean, I can see why it looks like yeah. that. But uh. and we actually have one of the shots that worked. And we were really bummed because we'd been all weekend unable to shoot anything. It had been raining. Yep. Like in that Ray, Ray Bradbury story, The Big Rain. Yeah. The planet yeah. was raining all the time. And there's 120 sun domes scattered over 11 continents on this stinking planet. You actually did one of the vlogs. I did. I think like you're, you're under the rain talking or it just stopped raining for five minutes and you're just, well, your hair is like so. Oh, I'm drenched, but there's like all these sunbeams coming out yeah. behind me and I'm like, it finally stopped. <laughs> so we've got literally we've got half an hour to shoot and all of a sudden these kids show up from like in the in the middle of the best shot like, hey, and start waving at the boat. Hi, what are you guys doing? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to get the kids in the shoot like right when, because it was in the shot, sorry. Yeah. And it was complex. So we had to do hand sign. This is Fonz using his patented hand gestures. Perfect. These guys were way out there. Right, exactly. We didn't have like a, a we weren't smart and didn't have like a walkie talkie or anything. Right, well, and what, what we're gonna do with walkie talkie was gonna get all wet in, in there anyway. Well, but I mean, they make waterproof walkie talkies. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. But the point is we didn't have one. So we're basically using like hand gestures, like people flying, flagging down uh, planes or something yeah. like that. <laughs> but well, and, and like then we, when, when we shot in the Mississippi, Later, the shots in the Mississippi, we had to coordinate with Scotty and Layla. So Scotty and Layla would go rowing both of them. Right. And then they would get in the position. And when Layla had to stand up and stop rowing, now yep. it was only Scotty. And the wind was pushing them out of where we wanted them. Right. To we had to go with, like, the wind and the direction of the water so we, flow and, like, time right. all of that together. And so in the end, we had to plan. You guys have to get in that spot. And then the wind is going to push you guys here. And by that time, I have you in focus. I had, <laughs> right. I had the telly. So if they moved a little bit, they were out of focus, which actually shows. Yeah. And then I showed that to Pablo when I was editing it. And Pablo, who's the real photographer, was like, leave it. Leave it out of focus. That's really cool because it looks like eerie. Yeah. Because at first I was like, oh, it's screwed up because I can't keep it in focus. I'm like, <laughs> and he was like, yeah, but that works. <laughs> but you nailed it. So there's like, you screwed <laughs> up, but you nailed it. <laughs> and, but, but it was also like they were just – they were pushing against the wind, which is already hard in and of themselves. And I made them take like how many? Like 16 takes that day? <laughs> it was a long day. And I think we started um, – the day started at 8 a.m. Because I remember you heading to the location to start getting set up with Scotty. Uh, and then me because for that particular day, I was production assistant bitch, essentially. Um, well, no, you're a production assistant. You just, <laughs> I, well, I know. But, but I know. the first thing was like, hey, man, uh, can you go get the no, that was bagels a, that and was, the coffee? That was a different day. That was a different day. That, that was a day with Elena and Will there. Oh, that's they right. To, that's right. Yeah. This day, this was the day that we canceled. We had morning shoot and night shoot, so we were going to do first light. That's right. And then magic hour. And in first light, I had a standing order in in the bagel shop with to get bagel yep. coffee, and we had to cancel for a last minute accident to happen. Remember that? Yeah. So we canceled that, and then we had to redo all the logistics for the afternoon and reshoot what we were going to shoot in the morning. Yep. And it was super windy, so. They had to like roll. It yeah. was just so exhausting. And I, yeah, that roll, was. And then the wind would move them here, and Scotty would be on his own trying yeah, to. Must have been 16, 17 Layla tanks. trying to stand up. Yeah. Well, With yeah, stand up with a boat that's doing this back and right. forth. And the wind blowing away. It was just amazing. Like the, what those guys did was just. And then in the end, I don't know if you remember this, but after the 17 sh shots when they were just exhausted, yeah. and they just came into the shore and they got stuck there. Yeah. And I was like, Scotty, act like you're rolling, and I'm just going to move the camera like this, and it looks <laughs> like just he's totally advancing. faked it. The whole yeah, and it, it made it. It made it in. That's true. So at the very, very beginning in that scene, where like Scotty's just passing by, the, it's just me moving the camera. Yeah, with that little thing that you like that we made from PVC, remember? Oh, it, that janky piece of equipment. Yeah, I don't know if we have a shot. Well, because now. okay, so. What we're talking about is we had seen a lot of these rigs for steady cams, and you saw a couple of them in, well, in, Madrid, in Madrid too. In Madrid, one one of the guys, one of the camera guys, actually made one. He made himself one that was a totally different one. Yeah, and he uses that one. That was like when Tay was running in the tunnel. Yeah, and the cameras. So he used that fake. It's a, uh, a a steady cam made out of PVC tubes. And yep, yeah. Uh, and so you looked up this one where it's like an over the shoulder mount essentially, yeah. but it's also made out of PVC tube. And I'm like, man. You start running with that thing, it's just going to like boop, 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 no, but it and did like fall apart. Do you remember? And, and I could use it like the other steady cam. I could use it like this and move it. Yeah. No, it was it worked. It wound up working. Surprise! I will admit, 
Yeah, you, you wound up working surprisingly, but I was not a skeptical. Believer. But yeah, yeah, you were not a believer. Well, because I'm used to like camera equipment that's like fabricated and made of metal. And, you know, you've got these nice, solid, sturdy mounts on there with yeah. like foam grips. And he shows up with like three pieces of PVC and some tape. And he's like, I got us a, I got us a rig. And I'm like, what do you mean? This is a pile of crap you got from Home Depot. It, it works. <laughs> exactly. It works really well. I still have it. I still have it. It worked great. Yeah, so that that was really funny. I'm, I'm just thinking right now, for some reason, you reminded me of, remember the shoot of um, Will getting me out of the coffin and smashing my face in the, in <laughs> yes. the ground? Yeah. Where you're like, uh, I'm, there's one shot where I'm just hitting my face against the ground and Robert is off frame throwing sand. Yeah, I have like little <laughs> sand in my yeah. hand. I'm like, he goes, Action, and then sometimes the sand would come, but I hadn't hit my face yet. Other times I hit my face, and then the sand would come. <laughs> we just had to try to that. like time yeah. that up perfectly. Yeah. Was that was hysterically long, and then and, and then that one turned out really well because we had like all these. We had three or four sh- different shots, yeah, in a fraction of a second. So I had to draw it. Remember, and we just looked yep. at, and then we did that one. So there was one scene where I'm just being pulled like this, and then another one where we inflated. One of these like inflatable um, mattresses. Yep. Do you remember that? And then I would just yeah. So you would just essentially like a, a stunt double, like yeah. jumping. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next one is me going like this one, like and Robert. Except at this sand, point, so he's like yeah. on his knees, so we're cropping it, so it looks like he's impacting yeah. the sand. Yeah. And I'm over here like a flower girl, just <laughs> throwing yeah. sand in his face. Some of those, some of those were really really fun to make. So yeah. Yeah. What else do you remember? Well, I wanted to, uh, there was one thing I wanted to talk to you about, and we touched on it a little bit here, but what were some of the key differences between shooting in Madrid versus shooting here in Minneapolis? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Number one, in, in, in Madrid, it was just the band and some of the running shots in the tunnel, and that was it. Minneapolis was costumes, boats, boat in motion, boat in a, in a shore. You know, there was a lot more. There were flames. Uh, there was a an hourglass it didn't work so i had to put a particle system to have sand coming out digitally well, and then you didn't even wind up going with sand did you yeah first it's so it, it was it's two things is one is black sand and then it yeah. turns into blood right so i had like i made four i remember the stains on my hands from the yeah that, the that blood, blood is i still have that blood like was on it's nothing but red dye yeah yeah it was just like <laughs> but it was it was awful it would just you know stick to everything um, so there's a point where the hourglass stops doing sand and, and starts dripping blood. Yeah. And that's that's a point where I couldn't, in the end, I wanted to actually make it turn and go from sand to... Oh, right. We never had time to shoot that. So that was one of those learning things. Yeah. So there was a... So, okay. So big difference. Soup, tons of props in Minneapolis, tons of costumes. Yep. Really hard logistics. Spain was all concentrated in a couple of weeks. Right. There was some logistics, but because I couldn't be there all the time, I just made them as simple as possible. Right. Like finding location scouting was not, was done for me. Right. Um, We had photographers. We had people that knew how to light. So we had equipment there and, uh, and then we had the band and the band knows what they're doing because there's, Chano has directed a ton of music clips before. Yeah. So that was really easy. Here we were more of a bunch of amateurs having a lot of fun with it. But yeah, if I had to like summarize it quickly, it's like a more professional shoot versus a very scrappy amateur shoot. Well, <laughs> let's let's qualify that because this the Minneapolis crew deserves a ton of props no, because I'm, we did a lot of good stuff. Because the, the, the professional crew. group in Madrid, although they were super good and I love them, and they just they were just stellar, had. Half of the nightmare of logistics that Minneapolis had. Minneapolis logistics were True. crazy. True. I ate most of them. Granted, like I was the one that stayed up doing um, hourglasses. But you, for example, you had to come and help me weather costumes. Like oh, I, yeah. There was a day where we yeah. were sitting down and we were watching. Um, we were watching something on TV, but all we were doing is sitting there with like these pieces of costume that we had to weather because they needed to look old and decrepit. Yeah. And so we're sitting there with that and like a little Brillo pad, and we're yeah. just. Yeah, this is like old we're ladies. We're just sitting here doing yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> were, like on our knees and everything, as we're just watching the show on yeah. TV. And that was most most of those were like <laughs> six different caps that Will wore as a boatman. We had right, like six versions, and we just like aged them all and just weathered. But we had to make them like look similar because they were all brand new. We're like, yeah, we yeah. have to make this look like it's been in the sun and beaten up and left yeah, in a shed like for something years. Something else, Mad Max. And, yeah, yeah, exactly like, like that. So we did a bunch of that stuff, and so that was one. So logistics was one. 
logistics and time consuming stuff was you know more Minneapolis than Madrid. Madrid was more professional than Madrid was easier for permits. Sure. Permits in Madrid were like you know, it was the Madrid of Manuela Carmena, so things were changing. Right. And things were a lot more fit, efficient when you just went in there. They gave you the forms right away. You passed security. You know, it was everybody was very efficient. And it was it was cheap. And then we started shooting there in Madrid. We'd get the cops come over. Like, what are you guys doing? Where's your permit? Right here. Oh, cool. Cool, thanks. Uh, what yeah. band are you in? You know, it's a, and I had to, I, I remember that they actually recognized the band that I used to be in. Yeah. Especially because they, the, my ex-bandmates, had just released. A, a video with another band from there that features a really hot chick as lead singer. So the cops were all over that, like, oh, did you? And I was like, no, no, I'm just one of the crew. So I acted like I was one of the crew. Uh, Minneapolis permits were, we just didn't even the, consider Those are kind of a struggle one. for like all the restrictions yeah. and laws yeah. for a lot of that because that's natural preserves here. Yeah. The one exception, I think, was with the aer- aerodrome. Is it how you say it? Aerodrome? The airport in St. Paul. Yeah. So it's a small airport, so it's called an aerodrome, I think. Or I, I'm not it's entirely an sure, but yeah. So I had to call in to tell them that we were planning to shoot with a drone and yep. tell them the date. And that was pretty cool because it's such a small little airport that they don't have all this official hula Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I actually left a message in the voicemail, and then I got a voicemail back later. Hey, Alfonso, Derek, you should be good. If you don't go above 10,000 feet, I think you should be good that day. <laughs> You're like, uh, not, with this so, drone, don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, our only worry is not getting entangled in the trees, you know. Yeah, exactly. And, and this guy, like Matt Wolf, who was introduced to me by my friend Donnie. Um, hi, Donnie. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, Matt was a uh, he's a drone flyer and, and he could fly a lot higher he has some spectacular stuff that he does with drones yeah yeah but I mean this was just um, and I'm, I'm, I'm showing the sequence here and uh, this was just try to get from inside the tunnel up and get the whole city of St. Paul. And that yeah. That worked out really spectacularly. But well, had, St. Paul or Minneapolis? No, it's St. Paul, actually. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we passed the Minneapolis um, sign running. Right. But then we get into a tunnel in St. Paul. What you see is St. Paul, actually, what, what that camera shows. But uh, one of the challenges there was there were trees between the tunnel and the sky. Right. The skyline. So the Matt had to do this little maneuver to get the drone clear off the trees and then <laughs> get back to the shot that I wanted. Really? And then it turned out that I didn't have enough seconds because the lyrics had to snap into something else. Right. So I ended up cutting the the drone. So the drone shot is one single shot. Yeah. But I had to cut it and cross dissolve to make it shorter. To to make it shorter and to make it seem like it's... No, I kind of I would have liked to have the whole thing, but it was just too long. Sure. And I couldn't accelerate it. And then the other things, we have one camera shot inside the tunnel following me, which is beautiful. Right. And I couldn't use it. And I'm going to use it for something else. (laughs) So, <laughs> yeah, because it was so cool. So yeah, so that was really interesting. Uh, and uh, so permits was the other thing. What else? Um, again, in Madrid, everybody was there, yep. including my nephew. My nephew actually was there on vacation, but for the same nephew you had come to Minneapolis. Right, but yeah. for Minneapolis, I had to get plane tickets. I had to use all my miles, you know, and get plane tickets for, <laughs> for Elaine. I had to come from Los Angeles. From, yeah, from yeah, Kitsuka. yeah. So there was all that, you know. Um, what else? I think that was it. Is there anything that you had to go? So there weren't any special effects in Madrid either. So we right. didn't have to do any of that. Um, right. That was all fun that we had here. You know, so I don't know. Is there anything else that, like, that you recall that maybe? Not especially. I just remember um, like working with you on trying to figure all of this out. Essentially, what we decided was that the, the key thing to get in Madrid was the band. And if you got that footage hmm. and a couple other shots, like you were good. Yeah. Whereas Minneapolis and like the Bayfield and all that stuff, like the stuff here in Minnesota, um, that was so like that was one half of the video, and this was the the story the story was, part. The story of the video. was here, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so that was kind of how it got yeah. divvied up. And because the story was here, there was a lot more stuff to like figure out mm-hmm. and learn. Um, and I feel like that was more of like you learning to become this independent filmmaker versus right. the stuff in Madrid where it was like, well, well we kind of had knew how to do that. Or at least you had a crew yeah, yeah. with you. It was like, oh, we've done similar stuff. Whereas here it was like, oh, let's just figure it out as we go. Yeah, we never did that. That's exactly right. So, yeah. So, I mean, that was my first um, exploration into that. And and even like we, we didn't – I mean, granted, we don't have dialogue here. So it would have been so much more complex. So we just really hit the ground running. 
definitely work from the oh, absolutely. with this. Yeah, the dialogue um, is all from the music itself. Yeah. Like the music so is that was like easy. a narrator telling the story. Right. right. But what I mean is that's easy. Like we don't we didn't have to worry about audio syncing, about um, actors rehearsing their lines. Right. So all of that stuff we didn't have to worry about. And even so, it was a super complex, you know, um, first first attempt at something. Absolutely. So it was super fun to do it. We learned a lot, but I mean we were so clueless. I, I was super clueless about so many things. <laughs> It was that part was you know uh, was was a big challenge there and uh, yeah and you're right so like music videos like the performance part we have that nailed down a little bit because we've done this for a while yeah but this whole storytelling thing was was the part that I enjoyed most and I learned a lot about and you know hopefully we did something semi good I mean I personally like it but I'm also extremely biased because I've helped you from like day one with all of this so I remember yeah I remember (laughs) when you did the vlog and you kept one of them saying like it's a labor of love and I was like yeah the credits are going to be a lot longer than the video itself (laughs) (laughs) like a four minute video and six minutes of credits yeah yeah (laughs) that's why the credits don't scroll they're just like boom 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 and that's it yeah because otherwise it'd be like you know "Mm -hmm." yeah and though oh one more thing that I, I should say too is like we had a couple years where unexpected stuff happened, so the production had to be dropped altogether. That is true. So, there were there were some delays with other stuff happening mm-hmm. um, so, that caused it to like kind of get hung up. Yeah, but originally it was going to be three years, it ended up being five. Right, but I guess that's you know. So five of it is not. It's not that it took us a lot longer. It's that. One and a half years, we just stopped. The whole production just stopped, and I retook it again later because yeah. I just had to stop it. Yeah. So, well, so going off of the fact that this was like your first time, like playing around and experimenting with being an independent filmmaker, mm-hmm. and knowing that you also like getting back to the festivals thing, knowing that you wanted to submit it to festivals to try and mm-hmm. have like a you know this is a short film. Yeah, it wasn't just a music video; it was a short film. Well, I presented it to the category of music videos and festivals, so right? It's, yeah, because otherwise, you know, if it's presented as a short film, I think it gets rejected. Really? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I haven't tried. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try one. You might want to try. When we're done, I'm going to look up a festival. <laughs> and try some minutes, see what happens. So, uh, what I'm curious about, though, was what was the process like of learning how to do that for the first time right. and figuring out like what festivals did you even want to submit to? Like, I mean, obviously, there's a couple key ones that people can think about that would be great, like mm-hmm. South by Southwest. Like trying to figure out what's oh, the yeah. process well, for that one. That was really daring. Like we did try some of the. Of course, ones. it was of course, daring, but yeah, we never made it. To why South wouldn't you? Try. Course, but yeah, yeah, we tried. But um, yeah. So like what uh, was the process of like trying to figure out like, okay, first of all, what do I want to submit it to? Second of all, how do I get it to right. the third of all? What do I need to have with the file? How well, do I get is, them the file? Yeah, so 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 that right now is a lot easier than it used to be because there's platforms online right that have all of that. It's like a social like the media online platform. Yeah. You just go in there and they tell you what to, you have to submit and then you browse festivals and you submit and you pay through them. So I'm using this one called Film Freeway. Okay. I remember that before I did that, so to give you a longer answer, before I did that, I did my research and so I asked a bunch of people about this that knew it. The first one was our friend Greg Bro. Yeah. He's an award winning animator who does his own films oh, and he's on Greg is amazing. He's got like, he's got some awards at some some pretty cool festival. So he was using this thing called Without a Box, which was the the number one platform that people use for it. Okay. Number two is Film Freeway, and I just used Film Freeway with a couple of festivals that I was researching. Just said submit. We accept submissions only through Film Freeway. Yeah. So I kind of went with that. Um, but before that, I had actually had a couple of friends in Spain. So Jose Sacris was. Uh, uh, he's like a veteran of the film industry back in Spain. Good okay. Friend. Okay. Uh, and he also is the um, he is the son of one of the most famous actors in Spain of the 20th century, Jose Sacristán. So they both share a name. Oh. So that's why he calls himself by sorry, Sacris. I just revealed. He calls <laughs> him, spoiler. <laughs> he, he calls himself by his nickname instead of using the the surname. Yeah. Oh, uh, but they're pretty tight, and Sakis knows a lot about this. He's been an actor, and he's he's uh, been also a lighting and prop master in all kinds of really good productions in you know in Spain. So he knew a lot about this. So I actually um, commissioned him to do some research. And he came with a list of festivals, right, where I could submit stuff. You know, that's true because you didn't yeah. just submit it to U.S. festivals; it was U.S. and Spain. Well, but Film Freeway does that too. Like so, Film. Oh, Freeway really? Okay. Spain. Film Freeway is so big; it's like the IMDb. Everybody that does a film festival now uses a platform like that because it's a lot easier. More and more and more festivals are doing that. Right. 
There's a couple that don't. South by Southwest notoriously is one. Right. That, that you know, you submit through them. And there was, uh, we got an award from one festival that I didn't submit through through um, Film for UA. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got an award from, with them. Uh, no, I think we had just got an official selection from them. Okay. But we're in, we're in their selection. So I don't know if we've gotten an award yet because they haven't. Screened. Well, I know that there's one that you submitted. Uh, I think it may have been through Film for UA, but uh, you submitted uh, and not only got chosen, but got premiered and featured there. Too. Yes, yes. Uh, and that was uh, the um, Wasteland Film Festival from Wasteland Weekend. Which is, I mean, if you guys have never seen what that is. That is a crazy uh, It's basically, it's kind of like Burning Man for a weekend, but it's nothing but like Mad Max style, right. like it's like clothing it's and a burning, cars it's a and Mad all Max, kinds of stuff. Right. It's a Mad Max version of Burning Man. So it's, it's really cool looking, honestly. I suggest, like, we'll have links yeah, below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But go check it out and just kind of see some other stuff from there because it's really cool. Yeah. So, um, and, and I, I think it was a great place to have our first um, public screening there uh, because everybody in the crew has some kind of affiliation to punk. Right. Punk rock in, in some way or shape or form. And so this isn't exactly that, but it's kind of like the same culture. And to me, like back when I was in film school um, in the early 80s, yeah. and Mad Max was the thing. So it's kind of interesting. It kind of goes full circle that we would. So that was that kind of touched an emotional <laughs> little, you know. That well, was just um, really cool. And I think like the overall tones and themes within the the video itself and the music, um, like it it just fit really well for that sort of well, that's, festival. Yeah, we don't fit exactly on the kind of selection that they do, but they their rules are like, you know, you have to have some kind of touch of weird fantasy right. to your film. So that's why I think we made it in. Because it was definitely weird. Well, fantasy. I think it was mostly because of your depiction of the boatman, too, for this one. Because if you think like a boatman or a ferryman, uh, traditionally a lot of these stories, it's just like a skeleton or mm. somebody that kind of represents death. And well, it almost no, looks no, like a reaper. There's, there's all kinds of no. There's all kinds of representations of Charon, um in in history and in legend. Right. We can go through them. I'll, I'll show some here. Well, I just remember the one that you went with specifically for mm-hmm. this shoot. Um, is almost like this pseudo demonic looking character. Well, he turns into a demon kind of at the end, like when he bursts in flames at the very right with like the, almost, the teeth and yeah, all yeah. of that. And at the beginning, he's kind of almost human, you know. We well, can't even tell in the human or in the beginning almost because it's just like this creepy figure. Well, well I'm modeling him after the back of the painting, so the, right, the whole right, shot of right. the boat starts with a shot inspired in the painting of the Isle of the Dead. Exactly. So one of the versions has a figure that looks very much like that, and so that's kind of where why we. Went Went with that, yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, but I think it's also like the whole the the gothic part of it, and I think the flame part has like if you look at stuff from Wasteland, yeah, there's flames all over the place. Oh, all, all the oh time. absolutely, there's it's flames just, all over the place. It's just always flames. So I thought that you know um, that got us in probably too. <laughs> um, I think the music had something to do with it, you know, because yep. they do favor that kind of. I'd like to think that Percy's uh, cameo in it also. Yeah, Percy it does a stellar job. <laughs> stellar. So that was a good place to screen for the first time. But we, we did make a bunch of official selections and a couple of awards. And Which is awesome. We're very honored, you know, and um, smaller festivals, granted. I mean, we don't, you know, we didn't make it to South Sure, there. but, I mean, yeah. it's still, overall, it's still just awesome you going through this process regardless of what happened. Mm-hmm. Because you just knew that that was something you wanted to do. Yeah. So it didn't matter. Right, I mean, right. It would be we great it, if yeah. you got in, but you were going to do it anyway. We did it for the love of it. We had a kick. We we got such a kick out of doing it. And um, well, we and so the much. fact that you're just so proud of it, and I, you know, I rightfully see why. Well, because this thing yeah. is just it's so it's so well, well not, done. I'm not that proud of it. I love the project. I, I'm not. That, I mean, there's a bunch of things I'm like I should have done this too. For you know, I mean, but you can't. I mean, always. honestly, you are going to be your own worst critic. Obviously, for right. a lot of these things. I mean, as a creative, everyone I mean, knows that you're gonna like criticize yourself. It's also. Stuff, I right? think I'm okay. I'll say this. I'll say you're right. I'll say this. I am really proud of how it came out. Because <clears throat> this is the only the best way I can say this. Because it came out a hell of a lot less amateurish than we expected. <laughs> to. So we're proud of that very much. So, but it's still a first time project, you know. Right. And, and right. And right. some things. I guess what I what I would say is, no one that has that hasn't delved into filmmaking thinks it's amateurish, and that's what we're proud of. Right. That it kind of passed that test. But I mean, if you show it to somebody that makes films, like most of them are going to go, like, "Oh, that's that's kind of cute." <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it, 
I don't know. Um, yeah, anyone who's like, been doing it for a while can like watch it once, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I see like the tricks but, and the but stuff." I mean, there's the... things that because we we work in this other thing that there's things that don't show that we are amateurs because we know so much about certain stuff. Yeah. So color grading came really easy, right? Because of graphic design uh, and the storyboards. I had I have been a storyboard in a past life. I used to be a storyboard. Right? So yeah, the yeah. storyboards. Everybody was like really impressed with the storyboards. It's like, oh it's yeah, like, I get exactly what you're talking yeah, about. This is so well planned out. And a lot of people that actually do filmmaking in Madrid were like, these storyboards are awesome. So we were really proud of that. You know. Yeah. So we did some of that stuff. The special effects. I'd never done special effects, but again, I've done animation in the past life. And I've done three. So it graphics, wasn't that much of a CGI. like a jump to do this. Right. So they were pretty good, man. They were the most part. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then you actually had help with one of the the graphics. I remember. Oh, no, uh, but I, the, I, I super directed that though. Right. So that that was more help. Uh, so it was one of my my old partners. It, it was CGI. more. Of, I I'm doing it through the hands of this person essentially. Yeah, he just split the hours to do most of the the work. But I mean, I did the art direction of that, and, right. and I had to composite it in the end. Right. So that it looked like, but it, you know, I mean, to be fair, it's a really cool effect. Oh, even it's, though it's, it's fantastic. like, it's like that. It's fantastic. It's a great yeah. effect. But I mean, it took like, it took a lot of planning and it took a lot of rounds and it took some explaining to do. And, uh, um, I really, it's actually inspired in another effect that I really, really like. So there's a ton of winks to movies. I like in the old man. Oh yeah. You know, some it's, that you see it, something, you it's don't like mean. four minutes of tips of the hat to yeah, like yeah. a bunch of other things. But there's some things that you don't see. For example, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to break this down any further than this, but a lot of the, the color grading, yeah. I've got inspired in old Ridley Scott stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the Duelist in particular. And a lot of people are going to go, oh, what? That doesn't look like, a, but whatever. I just took, you know, there's a ton of winks to silent film that are more obvious yep. to the look of silent film. And uh, they, where was I going with this? With uh, oh yeah, yeah, the particle system explosion. Yes. That's from the prophecy. So there's a there's a there's a moment where um, what's his name Viggo Mortensen who plays Satan. Yes, and he walks away and he explodes into a bunch of birds. And then that effect has been done many times afterwards, a lot better technically. Yeah, in a bunch of different ways too. Like yeah. there are vampires exploding into bats and all kinds of like different right, stuff. Right. Yes, and yes, but and, and if you look at this one and you really decompo- deconstruct it, if you know how to deconstruct, you can tell that there's footage that they've pasted on that repeats. And yep. But it's so well done in like a few seconds that actually you buy it every time you see it. Right. And so I wanted to do that, and I was like. Then I started looking around the web and I started seeing all the bird explosion and everybody's exploding into birds and tutorials yeah. of how to explode into birds and then explosion into bats. And I was like, we can do this in 3D. We've done this before. Santos and I, you know, yeah. used to be partners, so we've done particle systems before. I like, let's do something really creepy. Let's do explosion to bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Insects. So we did that. Yeah. Yeah. So so that was fun. Um, so then I, what happened is I had Santos make a particle system and have it explode. And that took several rounds because... Um, to play around with the particles until we got something that looked like insects. And then I got a couple of insect cloud like, stock footage. Yeah. And I blended those together. So, like, you know, the, just the seconds of doing that completely sells the shot. So, yeah, we're really proud of that. Yeah. That's how much that's like once three seconds, maybe? It's not even three seconds. It's I just don't a think. Boom, it's so know? quick. But it was it was a lot of fun, you know. And, and, and you know, we, we I remember like showing Santa's the. With Viggo Mortensen explosion. I yeah. Said, we have to do this, you know? This and, is, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. this is our North Star, essentially. Right, exactly, exactly. You know, so yeah, so that was fun. <laughs> so, uh, I just, one thing I remember the most, and sort of like bringing this all back to like wrapping this up and finishing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, is that I remember the day, the day that you finally finished Stuff with the Boatman. Oh, man. Like, after five years of working on everything. And one full year, sorry, in 12 long months of everybody going, like, you're going to finish The Boatman? Right, right, right. Because right. everyone being, was just like, being pestered by people and all yeah. kinds of stuff. You could tell people didn't believe I was ever going to finish it. You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I remember the day that you finished it, you called me, and you were like, Motherfucker, <laughs> it's finally done. The yeah, boatman yeah. is done. <laughs> My life has no meaning. <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but just like you literally yelling in like mm. relief and joy because you're like all of it, the, the whole process, like it's right. finally done. And I remember Greg telling me so because I picked his brain. Greg telling me there's a point where you have to, you have to say it's done. Yep. And you're going to have 18 voices in your head saying, but what about this? I can tweak this. I can tweak that. Like, you got to just walk away. And I was like, okay, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and I was like, it's a four minute video. Enough of this shit. You know, <laughs> you just can't go any longer. It is even, it's more than a year per minute. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's so crazy. That is so funny. Uh, but, I just, but yeah, but there's some – sorry, I want, just want to say that because I just remembered what – I don't know what Yeah, absolutely. Saying. One of the big surprises was one of the festivals sent me an email saying, um, we've got a jury recommendation for you to submit to these other categories. Okay. And granted, they charge you for it. So they're kind of upselling you. Sure. But they gave me a voucher to do it at a, at a big discount, a like 50% discount. Oh, nice. And they recommended other um, – and I got nominated for an extra one. But one of the categories they – they, so I was expecting – for some reason, I thought the special effects were going to be cool. Right. But I just don't realize, like, how digital CGI has gone this – and I saw some of the clips I was competing with in some festivals were just, like, way out there. And, and yeah. my special effects are kind of like – they were cool in the 70s. They hold up today. Right. But they're not that – in the, But compared to, like, people who are going to school for it right now and, like, learning all these right. new tricks and techniques that are going out exactly. to companies that do stuff for, like – you know the Marvel Avenger movies right. and exactly. like all that stuff. So it's 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 still like correct and proper. Yeah, but it doesn't even meet that. Yeah. So um, so for some reason I thought that was going to be cool, and I realized yeah I'm, I might have been doing CGI in the in the past, but I'm not with it anymore. I mean I'm, right. I'm good enough to do something decent, but I'm not blowing anyone's mind. But then it was interesting because I was recommended for best production design. Really, and I was like. So good. That's really so, awesome. Like, like all those hours of Bert and I were like scrubbing clothes. <laughs> we're sitting there. Paid off, you know? <laughs> the, the whole weekend of just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like strapping the strapping the hourglass. Do you remember when Will broke the hourglass? Were you there? Yes. And we had like four. And he's like, I'm going to break it. If, if I do it this strong, I'm going to break it. I'm like, go for it. We have another three. <laughs> sure and enough. And the other number two broke and We're like, oh, shit. No. <laughs> So, so no, yeah. with that, and then definitely like the research that you did for how to make a lot of these, yeah, like props and effects, and God, just one thing I remember um, that reminded me of the coffin part of this thing, and oh, like, yeah. the cardboard box that we had to like staple together each time we wanted right. to have the coffin ready, and then right. tear it apart because we couldn't transport it like all stapled together. Right, <laughs> so, and then and then I got a trunk. <laughs> I got one of these garden trunks to put tools in. And my legs stuck out. That's the one where I emerged from, remember? Yeah. yeah. And we have a shoot. My legs are sticking out because I can't fit the whole thing. So it's like, just focus on the front. Yeah. We're shooting me <laughs> opening and, and peeping out. And just my, yeah. I actually think a clip of that made it into one of the vlogs. Too. I think, I, I think, yeah. I think, I think yeah, yeah. We, should, we should shoot some. We should show some of that stuff. Yeah, we will. So we're putting links up all of that, right? All of it. It's going to be a very link heavy episode yeah. to link out to stuff. But, you know, with all of that being said, I highly encourage any of you who are listening and are curious or want to watch it or just want to know, like, what the hell are we talking about throughout the, all of this? Click the link and go check out the video. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been a lot of a, a lot of effort and passion that's been put into it. Um, and I just think that regardless of who you are, your musical interests, your taste in movies, like, if you appreciate artistic endeavors in any way, shape, or form, watching this, like, you'll you'll understand. You'll you'll get it. And I, I would just encourage anyone who is listening to go, go give it, go give it a look, check it out. Yeah, and just see, you could see the, the product of our blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, and, absolutely. And it was a labor of love. It was awesome. So we had a ton of fun doing it, right? Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Would you do it again? Uh, yeah, one hundred. Yeah, really, I would do it again. If, if you said, "Hey, I want to do this again tomorrow," I, I'd, I'd be in. Wow. Thanks, man. I'm I'm working on we three different channels and helping a buddy with another one, and I'm still like I definitely want wow. to do this. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. Because I would definitely <laughs> try to do something that is more doable than than that shit. I don't know. I think we could step it up. I mean, that wow, that was yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that that story was so crazy. We learned a lot yeah. during that, and I think we could, if we wanted to do something else, we could do another one and yeah. step it up even farther. I, but my thing would be to try to make it. Something maybe of the same complexity, but try to work on make it more understandable. Sure, because it was so much. It was so much stuff in just four minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, yeah, cool. Well, thanks for helping me with that. And absolutely, thanks for being a part of it. That was awesome. It was so much fun, and I'm so glad that now we can officially talk about it after all of these years. And now we have this podcast where we can yeah. sort of like elaborate on it yeah. um, and do that. So and where we don't have to do any particle systems. I mean, we could. Watch this.
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if I have time, I'll put a fire explosion. <laughs> fire explosion. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for listening. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you're curious about the, the behind the scenes videos, the music video itself, any of that, links are in the description down below. And uh, until next time. Oh, wait. Oh, there's an Instagram account. There is an Instagram account. Go to the Instagram account. We have a link in the description and give us some likes. Another link. <laughs> uh, another one. <laughs> All right, everyone. Until next time. Stay out of prison. And walk in the shade.